Hello coaches, thanks for joining me for another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. After Mikel Arteta last week, we're going to stay on the topic of influential coaches. And this week we're going to look at De Zerbi at Brighton, who somehow managed to exceed expectations, even from his biggest fans before he started at Brighton, that said that he would be a difference maker, that he would do things that we haven't seen before. He's gone above and beyond that there. One area that I've been very, very impressed with, along with a lot of other people, has been his ability to dominate possession and create chances, monopolise possession, Pep Guardiola called it, with two holding midfielders. Sometimes with that system, Guardiola has said it himself, sometimes it's difficult to build and be fluid in an attacking way with two holding midfielders. Sometimes it lacks the ability to rotate really, really fluidly because they can get in each other's spaces. But the Zerbi does it at a level that we haven't seen before, I think. So in this breakdown, I want to look at three different solutions that the Zerbi's had that has impressed me definitely when I've watched it. So I want to break it down and take a look at it. I think you can use similar solutions with your own team if you have two holding midfielders. So I hope you enjoy it. Before we start, please give it a like and a subscribe so you don't miss any more of them. If you haven't gone and checked out the Mikel Arteta breakdown that we did last week, a free PDF, please check it out on the videos as well and subscribe so you don't miss any more. Okay, Deserby build ups, let's go. Okay, so most teams are reluctant to press aggressively against Brighton, probably because they're so good. But from a number standpoint, initially with two centre midfielders, two holding midfielders, they can release fullbacks pretty easily with bounce passes. So teams invariably drop off slightly in that initial press. They give up a 2v1 advantage and then tend to set a press and trap. Manchester United did this in the FA Cup semi-final where the opponent managed to contain in a 4v3. Stop Brighton from progressing the ball and then press on the trigger. And when Brighton feel the press, this is what they do. The second midfielder moves higher, gives the opponents a decision to make. The first midfielder sees the red shirts moving towards their outlet, which is the centre-back, skips the pass, can go into the central midfielder as well, but skips the pass into the full-back. It's not done yet, though. One of the most underrated aspects of the Zerbi's build-up is the ability of full-backs to progress the ball centrally. So by doing this, you change the picture completely from a full-back just driving down the line, ask questions of opposition back fours, make hold of midfielders, and the other team make decisions, and you're one pass away from potentially creating an opportunity with just by driving inside really really good solution to release a fullback all right this time we'll move a little bit higher up the pitch opponents again might not want a high press this time they'll opt for containment again you give up possession initially but do not let brighton progress the ball and break out and this is where positioning and timing become key one of the whole midfielders move into a higher line so the centre-back still have that numerical advantage. It doesn't disrupt the build, but it asks questions of the opponent's structure. And typically they'll opt to screen the player that's dropped in this space. Then at the right time, the midfielder can drop low, create an angled combination pass with their holding midfielder partner, and then allow them to break through the block again by carrying the ball into the final third. So Pep Guardiola's talked a lot about their ability to monopolise the ball and generate 25 to 30 chances a game. Well, by breaking out with the dribble, you do both high risk, but also high reward. And then the third one, another block solution using two holding midfielders. If the opponents use their centre forward to try and limit them to one side and overshift the numbers then, where opponents might try to move Brighton and keep them contained on one side, Brighton here move their weak side fullback inside more, push their other fullback high, so now you have a numerical advantage again initially in a 5v4, which again creates the possession element. They still got to solve the progression, but they can use the free player to face forward in possession of the ball. So as the higher attackers in Brighton drop into the spaces between the lanes, the opponents then step up their defensive line, but they allow a diagonal vertical pass, which releases the Brighton fullback, this time in a wider area, but in the final third, You've got a crossing opportunity and you've probably got numbers coming in behind them ready to score. So they have it, coaches. Three different solutions to building up with two sixes, two holding midfielders. If you want the details of this, I'll put it on the Modern Soccer Coach website. You can go over there and you can look at a little bit more depth if you want to take a little bit more time. When you're there, please also check out Modern Soccer Coach resources, session plans, webinars, ebooks, all that good stuff 
we've got over there. A big, big takeaway for me with the Zerbi system is that every time that the opponents try something that you think will disrupt their build, they've got a solution like that. So it's either pre-planned or the players are making decisions or they're using a little bit of both. And I think it's using a little bit of both. I think it's largely principle-based rather than just numbers. So their solutions are a little bit more consistent rather than 100 different solutions to 100 different problems, if that makes sense. The second thing that really, really impressive for me is that ability to, once they break pressure, either with a press or by breaking through the initial block, they are gone. They are in goal scoring mode, so to speak, where they're trying to create chances. Is that a mentality? Yeah, maybe. But I think largely that's helped by the ability with players to drive. So the difference of possession and progression can also be the difference between static pass into someone's feet and then penetrating on the dribble. Once someone drives with the ball at their feet, defenders have to commit. Space becomes a lot more difficult to manage, especially if you have those forward runners that Brighton have. So I think tactically, it opens them up to exploit spaces, but you then have to give them so much credit. Once they get into those spaces, then they go to a different level and the tempo then suddenly speeds up. It's almost like the Brazilian teams of years and years ago much different game but they would have a really really slow build and then once the space opened up or a window opened up the brazil team's ability to change tempo really really high and click it into another gear and create chances that was a hallmark of those brazilian teams brighton are doing it at a way faster level and again very very high risk the margins of error if you lose the ball counter attack the transition threat in the premier league is huge and they're still, still comfortable. They look comfortable doing it. It's amazing. So I hope you enjoy it. If you want to see another coach breakdown or if you want a specialised topic, please put it in the link below. And when you're in the links below, please give it a like and a subscribe. I really, really appreciate the support. We're almost at 28,000 subscribers. It's amazing. Uh, the channel's grown and grown and I couldn't be able to do it without people liking it, subscribing it and sharing it. It's a massive, massive difference and I really, really appreciate it. So... Thank you and please continue to do so and we will keep making the videos. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.